Today we're going to be looking at all the winter glove offerings from Halvarsons, including this one. Small disclaimer, I do not know how to pronounce this properly, so if I do mispronounce it, please feel free to roast me in the comments. But we're going to go ahead and try and say them all right now and get it out of the way. The first one is going to be the Olivi. The next one is going to be the Duvid. Uh, the next one after that is the Yuzdal. And the last one, by no means least, is the Batour. Right. Without further ado, let's get in with the first one, the Olive. <laughs> this glove is made out of two different materials as well as all the other gloves that we're going to be talking about today, which is, of course, a leather mixed with a bit of textile, just for that flexibility, that light weightness, but having the leather in those key abrasion zones that we need them the most, particularly in the inside of the palm. So if we look on the inside of the Olive's, it also has high art reinforcement zones in the inside so that upon a crash, let's say, and you're sliding along the, the road, you have a lot more material to wear through before it reaches your hand, which is always lovely. Now, High Art is their own material that they have that they try and put into a lot of their garments, whether that be gloves, jackets, so on and so forth. Now, the knuckle protection is a hard knuckle protection, but it doesn't rub against your knuckles purely because it has a split knuckle protector design, so it's nice and freely moving around your hand and it doesn't caress your knuckles. The closure system on this is a wrist strap closure system, but it also has an accordion stretch panel stitching on the inside, so it still has a somewhat secure fit on your hands, even if that is undone. Something quite unique to all Halvarsson's gloves is the little nudad. Again, if I butchered that, I apologize, but this is quite nice to have if you want to use your touchscreen on your phone and stuff like that with this little stylus, little nub on the end of there, whereas other companies will probably put a fabric. This is more accurate when they're trying to access different apps and stuff on your phone at the side of the road, of course. Don't be using your phone while riding. That would not be good for anyone. Now, with all these gloves, they're gonna be fully waterproof. They have their dry weight plus membrane. That is, again, their own sort of membrane that they use, like, for example, Alpine Stars has their Dry Star, um, and Rucker have Gore-Tex, and also their new AWS system as well. So these manufacturers have their own sort of waterproof membrane. If you wanna know the ratings, then you can find them online, but they'll also be in the description down below. I believe it's like a 10K hydrostatic head. If you wanna geek out on the numbers, that basically means it's gonna be good for all kinds of weather. Moving on to the next one, which is gonna be the Usedal. So with this glove, what I found with it is the fit is a lot thinner, a lot slimmer, but it still has a lot of wind resistance, let's say, against the elements and everything else like that because of this outlast membrane, the lining that they use inside of this glove. So they can kind of chip away at the bulkiness of the glove, giving you the maximum tactile feedback on the grips, on the handlebars with this nice tactile leather on the interior here. Now again, with all the other gloves, it's gonna be a mesh, textile -y sort of construction mixed in with a bit of leather. You also have these like knuckle protectors as well, which is quite a cute, unique little touch onto these, which you don't really see on the rest of the lineup. They're all a softer material. This is a harder, more refined bit of plastic, I would say, or whatever the composite they use in this. You have the stretch panels again on the fingers to give you that flexibility. I feel like the fit of this is a lot nicer purely because you have this wind wire system. Now I'm always a fan of wiring systems when it comes to gloves because you can get a much more secure fit. And as you can see, it's more gauntlety, so you have more of a tighter secure fit once you start winding that in. Now, if I release this and open this up, you can see on the inside that is the outlier sort of lining in there. It's a body temperature regulator. You find it in other garments that they use as well. It was actually developed by some people, I believe, in NASA. It was gonna be used in space, but uh, now we get it as motorcycle riders, which I think is pretty fantastic. The construction of the knuckle protector is a softer material. It's more malleable on there, but still gonna harden upon impact as well with the split knuckle protector on there too. Again, just to alleviate any sort of kind of uh, rubbing against your knuckles on the back of your hand. This is also still using the dry weight plus, again, a waterproof a membrane that is uh, made by Halvarsons themselves. And again, another fantastic glove if you want something a bit more lightweight, but still holds that sort of um, temperature resistance against the elements if it gets a bit too, too cold. Next on the list, Duved, Duved. 
The next one is a style of glove that you may or may not have seen before. It's got loads of different names for it. It's called the lobster glove. It could be the three finger glove, even though four fingers go into that portion of the glove. Or the one that makes you look like a ninja turtle when you're wearing them. Now these are designed this way because you have the two fingers in a pair to share that heat across each other, in theory, making your hand a bit warmer on those longer journeys for a longer period of time. Now if that doesn't work, you also have the inner born lining on the inside, which is meant to retain heat longer than that of, let's say, a typical material like wool. Now, when you put your hand inside of it, it's not going to be the fact that your two fingers will be rubbing up against each other. It is separated by that inner bone, but you're still sharing it in each side, trying to retain that heat, if it makes sense. In terms of safety, yes, it's going to be absolutely fine. They wouldn't produce a glove like this if it wasn't going to be safe when you're riding your bike. Using the clutch or the brake on your motorcycle is going to be absolutely fine with this glove. You have enough reach there and you can still use the two finger method when you're trying to maneuver your bike anyway. If we look at the interior of it, we do have the high arch reinforcement material again on there as well as a palm slider again to reduce the chances of your hand being exposed in the event of an off when you're sliding down the road. Hopefully not, even though it's going to be icy very soon. The knuckle protector on this is another a hard knuckle protector once again, but it is backed with that split knuckle protector design on there too. Wrist closure system is just a strap around the wrist. It's a bit more gauntlety if you want to call it that. It also has a accordion stretch panel around the wrist again to keep it semi-secure even if you haven't got this closed up completely. The membrane, like I said previously, is going to be the Dryaway uh, Plus 2.0, which is going to be their membrane for waterproofing, keeping you nice and dry on those wet rides. Last but no means least, we have the Vator, which kind of looks similar to something that we spoke about earlier on, like the Usedal, except for the fact that it has a traditional closure system that you would have on a standard glove. It has one across the wrist as well as one further up the forearm, giving you that maximum security if you prefer that over the wind wire. For the construction, again, it has a leather palm as well as being mixed with a textile exterior on the backhand of your hand as well. Hard knuckle protector on this one once again with a split knuckle design on the rear there. And it has an outlast lining as well as inner born, which is a bit more than some of the other ones we spoke about today. So it's going to be a lot warmer, but still being a very lightweight sort of tactile feeling pair of gloves when you're maneuvering on the bike. Something to note if you're unsure which these gloves have in terms of it, if it's innerborn, if it's outlast, if it's dry weight, if it's high art or anything like that, they will more than likely label it on the inside of the glove there and you can just scroll through it like a little catalogue as well as a little flag to represent where these were designed. But that makes up the whole line for the Hal Barson's waterproof sort of range. In terms of their gloves, now for, for me personally, if I was going to be someone that was riding in somewhat a very cold climate, I would go for the Doof because you have that sort of ability to share the heat around. It's going to be the warmest glove out of the lot, in my opinion. If you're going for something a bit more lightweight, either the Yuzdal or even the Batorp, if you want something that has a traditional closure system. Now the Olibis, I've actually used personally and I prefer these because it's a shorter cuff glove. As compared to the other ones, I don't really like the gauntlety one, so if you're like me, this might be the one to go for. Let me know what you think of the Hal Varsons Winter Glove range. If you would pick one yourself, let me know in the comments down below. If you did enjoy this video, give us a thumbs up. Be sure to subscribe and ride safe, and we'll see you all soon. Peace, Earthlings. It always feels like I'm in like Star Trek when I have one of these on.